Okay, well, good uh, good morning. So if we look at addition and subtraction of whole numbers, you could maybe come into it what will come next. We're working through the four algebraic operations. And in terms of complexity, the next on our list is probably a multiplication. So multiplication can be understood as repeated addition. And I don't know that that's actually the most useful way to understand it because it sort of breaks down when you start multiplying fractions, for example. But the way this is usually going to be introduced to children is suppose you're adding the same thing together, a bunch of times. Eight plus eight plus eight plus eight. Well, we don't want to have to write that down. So we devise a quick way of writing that we have four eights. We say that having four eights is four times eight. Um, <clears throat> see, by the way, where this terminology comes from, four, eight times. But we don't, but if we put the times at the end, the four and the eight might get mixed up, and you might say we're saying 48. So we put it in the middle, four times eight, and we write, Eight dot four or eight x four. One of the one of the oddities of mathematical education. I mean, I think this is still true that we that we teach children to write that 8x4, and then we get to algebra, and suddenly the x is an, used as an unknown variable, and we can't write 8x4 anymore. So we suddenly switch, and we start writing 8.4. And why we do this, why we teach this notation that we know is going to stop working around eighth grade and then they'll need to learn a new notation is, is one of those little mysteries in life. But be that as it may, um, if you just present multiplication like this, it's not really getting across what makes multiplication important. It makes it look like it's a sure path. Like addition is what really matters, but we have this quick way of writing addition. It's probably a little more informative to say, Multiplication is used to make statements about numbers and sizes 
of equal sized groups. So let's say there's a scholastic competition between school wars. And there are 20 schools that send teams of five students to compete. And we ask how many students are being sent to compete. Well, one way of thinking of it would be that the first school sends 20 students, sends five students, sorry, and the next school sends five students, and the third school sends five students. You're going to get off the sick of writing those plus fives, though. A better way of thinking of this is that you have 20 fives and there are 20 times five, which we may be able to do in our head, a hundred students. We'll talk about actually doing multiplication by hand a little later. So, if there are some number of groups and each group contains some number of elements, then the total number of elements is okay, let's introduce a new word. I mean, not really new. You've seen it all, you've seen it before, new for the purposes of this course. The total number of elements is the product. When you multiply two numbers together, the result is the product. So going back to this, each school is sending a group. Each group contains five elements, the elements being students in this case. So the total number of students is the product the number of groups times the number of elements in each group. Again, that ends up being a hundred.
There are other ways to think of multiplication, each with their advantages. Multiplication as the size of n array, an extremely wordy way of um, presenting a pretty simple idea. So let's say we have groups of equal size and we'll ditch the schools and students because that's too many to write down. So let's say we have um, four committees. See, I've worked in academia too long, if that's my go-to example, but four committees of five members each. And let's say there's no overlap between these committees. And we ask how many committee members are there. Well, let's just jot down. We've got one, two, three, four committees of one, two, three, four, five members each. The second committee, one, two, three, four, five members. This third committee, one, two, three, four, five members. This last committee, one, two, three, four, five members. So the number of members each member is represented by a square in a rectangle, let's do, in this array. And that gives you four times five committee members. And one nice thing about this way of understanding multiplication. I mean, it's very closely related to area, right? What is the area of a four foot by five foot Room. Well, it's once again, let me make this match four foot by five foot. The area is twenty square feet. So this understanding of multiplication as counting the members in an array is basically the same as understanding multiplication as giving you the area of a room. And the advantage of this is that this understanding of multiplication can generalize to fractions and decimals. This is looking ahead. We have not, you know, formally presented 
fractions or decimal was. But presumably we know basically what they are. And say you want to talk about 2.1 times 4.7. Well, just thinking of an array doesn't work because an array has to have whole numbers. Thinking of it in this way doesn't really work, or at least it's kind of awkward because you have a fractional number of a group. Like what's 2.1 of a group? And certainly thinking of it as repeated addition doesn't work. What does it mean to say you're adding 2.1, 4.7 times? That's nonsense. Whereas thinking of it as area, okay, so the room is 2.1 feet on one side. And it's 4.7 feet on the other side. And this room has an area. And you can understand 2.1 times 4.7 as the area of the room. So this, the great thing about this way of understanding multiplication is that it generalizes. And now that I'm writing these decimals, I think maybe I kind of do understand why we use X's for multiplication, because the alternative is that we're using dots for multiplication and decimals, and that can be kind of confusing when you see it. <clears throat> Another model. What? Cartesian, not no, Cartesian product. Another model, which we'll call the Cartesian product model, understands multiplication as a way to answer the following question. You are designing something, let's say, and as part of the design product, you are making a series of choices. So you're going to a fast food place and ordering a burger, and you can choose toppings. You can think of that as a series of choices. Do you want onion? Yes or no. Do you want ketchup? Yes or no, and so on. And we understand multiplication, as giving the total number of combinations you could choose. or you could make a kind of awkward sounding idea that's going to be significantly less awkward when we see an example. Let's say you're building a sandwich. 
H. And there are three types of bread you could choose. White or wheat or rye. And there are four types of cheese you could choose on let's say cheddar provolone swiss american how many types of sandwiches? How many different types of sandwiches can those two choices give you? Well, three times four equals 12. And to understand this, we can very easily tie this back to the idea of an array. We can say, well, we have three types of bread. White. Wheat. And rye. And we have four types of cheese. Let me just cheddar, provolone, Swiss, American. And every combination of a bread and a cheese is represented by a point in an array. White and provolone is represented by that point. Rye and Swiss is represented by that point, and so on. So how many combinations are there? Well, there are as many combinations as there are points in an array. And we've already said that that's a way of thinking about multiplication. That's three times four. So we should ask ourselves, it's always useful to ask ourselves this, what's this understanding good for? I mean, when we were talking about area, we could talk about what it's good for. Area is a very easy way of taking this notion of multiplication and generalizing it so that you can have decimals or fractions. This is a very good way of understanding multiplication if you're going to start talking about multiplying more than two numbers at once. So let's say that we have these three types of bread, four types of cheese, but let's stop making this a cheese sandwich. And let's say we also have three meat we can choose from um, beef, ham, chicken. And let's say we also have two types of sauce. we can choose from um, 
Let's keep this simple, say mustard. Or ketchup, one or the other. So how many types of sandwich can you make now? Well, this generalizes perfectly. Three times four times three times two. And the other methods of presenting multiplication don't really generalize, or at least they don't really generalize well. If we try to take this and generalize it, well, we get a, an array in a four-dimensional space. No way to visualize that. Again, if we tried to take this, we'd get a room in four-dimensional space. No real way to think about that. I mean, if we tried to get this, it's you'd have groups containing groups containing groups. That's really awkward. That's not a good way to think about this, probably. And I mean, if we go back to our repeated addition idea, well, first we're adding a bunch, we're doing repeated, repeated, repeated addition. Again, it's really awkward to think about. This model, um, gives a really, therefore, is the only model we have that really gives an idea of why we would want to multiply more than the two numbers together and an understanding of where you would do it and what the product means. So that's the great advantage of the Cartesian product model. Once we sort of introduce the idea what multiplication is, when we would use it, we should talk about some properties. I mean, ultimately, we should also be doing multiplication, but I think we're probably going to wait until Friday for that. Multiplication has some properties, and some of these properties are just the same as properties we've seen addition have. Some of them are different. So, multiplication is commutative. When you multiply order doesn't matter. And this is one of these things, again, it might seem, or maybe it doesn't, maybe I'm projecting my own feelings onto you. It might sometimes seem as if all of these models are a little silly. I mean, we understand what multiplication is. Do we really need five different ways of expressing that understanding? But we've seen that, you know, um, different models are good for different things. Um, the commutative property is not going to be obvious to most children. And I go so far as to say it won't be obvious to most adults. If you try to uh, um, present it using this understanding of multiplication, 
Like, why is three, are taking three groups of seven the same as taking seven groups of three? I don't think that's a really obvious statement. But this becomes an obvious statement if we understand multiplication in terms of an array or in terms of an area. Let's look at three times four. And we're claiming that's the same as four times three. Well, we just take this rectangle and we rotate it 90 degrees. And making allowances for my poor artistry, this is the same rectangle. We've just moved it a little. It's probably pretty clear that taking a rectangle and rotating it isn't going to change the area. And that three times four and four times three, therefore must be the same. The associativity property, again, this is a property that addition has as well. It says that if you're multiplying three things together, You can move those parentheses around however you want. And I think probably this is going to be easiest to understand in terms of the building a sandwich model, um, which is somewhat more formally known as the Cartesian product model. I mean, let's say we're selecting cheese, And we are selecting bread, and we are selecting meat. So on the left, remember that the parentheses say to do something first. On the left, we're first asking how many ways we can select the bread and the meat. And after we've selected the bread and the meat, then we select the cheese. On the right, we start by selecting the cheese and the bread. And after we've selected the cheese and the bread, we select the meat. And it's probably, or I hope pretty clear, that these orderings don't matter. That if you select the bread and the meat before you select the cheese, or if you select the cheese and the bread before you select the meat, you're still going to have the same number of possible sandwiches. So that is the associative property. Here's a property 
Well, admission does have this property. I don't know if I have actually mentioned it by name, but this is, again, this is giving a fancy name to a not very fancy concept. The product of two whole numbers is a whole number. And the reason we're presenting closure now, whereas we didn't bother when we talked about addition, is that now we've seen an operation that doesn't have this property, and that's subtraction. Who number, I mean, this terminology isn't perfectly standard, but when I say who number, I'm thinking of a positive counting number. It's not true that if you take one positive counting number and you subtract another positive counting number, you'll get the positive counting number. I mean, three minus seven, for example. So now that we've seen that it's possible not to be closed, we draw explicit attention to the fact that multiplication is closed. Any of these products is going to give us a whole number. And now here's Here's a product, or a property, I mean to say, that we have with most addition, sort of. Addition has what's called the identity property. Multiplication has what's called the identity property. But these identity properties look kind of different. With addition, the identity property is that adding zero doesn't do anything. It doesn't change anything. That was the identity for property for addition. For multiplication, The identity property says that multiplying by one doesn't change anything. Um, again, this word identity, I mean, I sort of call it fancy. I, I guess I don't know what else you'd call it. The word identity comes from the idea that we're not changing the identity of a number. Adding zero to A doesn't change A. Its identity remains the same. Multiplying A by one doesn't change A. Its identity remains the same. And you have to be a little careful, or rather, you probably don't have to be careful because there are adults who've been seeing this stuff forever, but new learners have to be a little careful about zero. Because zero when you're multiplying and zero when you're adding, it's a very different thing. And it does something special in each case. When you're adding, zero is the identity. When you're multiplying, any number times zero, is zero. Uh, 
Um, in terms of presenting this to children, a lot of our models are kind of become awkward um, if one of your numbers is zero. Like building a cheese sandwich, if you have zero types of bread, I mean, no, there are zero sandwiches you can build, but that's a kind of weird statement. Build a sandwich and you need to select a bread, but there isn't any bread. I mean, probably, at least to my mind, the easiest way to approach this is going to go be to go all the way back. And your kids will already have learned that is adding zero doesn't change anything. So if you're adding a bunch of zeros together, the result is going to be zero. One last property, and this property combines or connects multiplication and addition. Distribute if. The distributive property says that if you're multiplying by a sum, that's the same as multiplying by the first element of the sum, multiplying by the second element of the sum, and adding those together. So five times three plus four is five times three plus five times four. 15 plus 20 is 35. And in terms of why this is true, it's got to be the area model. Five times two plus six. So you're looking at a rectangle. And one of the sides of this rectangle was five units long. The other is two plus six units long. Well, the area of the entire rectangle is this product. The area of these smaller rectangles angles are five times two and five times six. You take the two smaller rectangles and you put them together and you have the bigger rectangle. So there's the distributive property. That brings us to actually doing multiplication. And also, and with three minutes left, a very natural place to call this lecture. I'll see you Friday. I'll have your homework um, back to you and I'll have new homework for you.